What's up, everybody? Welcome to The Run with Manny Wilson. Now I'm getting into the topic that, that Stephen Curry and Kevin Durant are probably never going to win an MVP, as long, another regular season MVP, as long as they're staying on the Warriors. And, and my simple reason for that is not because they're not good enough, not because they don't deserve it, none of that. But even if Steph continues to do what he's doing, which is crazy, he made 11 threes last night, had 51 points, and only played in three quarters. This tells me that if he really wanted to or if Steve Kerr really wanted him to, he could probably drop 100 in the game or, or if, he, if he tried or at least 80 plus if he wanted. But obviously that wasn't that important. But my reasoning for them two not being able to get MVP is one, they're loved, but they're also hated so much. It's crazy. So many people hate on them because of the team that they have when really it's not like they they rigged the system and picked up everybody. People they were just good. The team is just good. Kevin Durant had an option to either go there or go play somewhere else, and he said, "Why not go play with a good team? The team is just good." So some people really don't like them for that. Kevin Durant is hated for it. They probably won't even mention his name in terms of MVP, no matter how good he plays. Uh, Stephen Curry, he's on that winning roster too. So the, he's probably the most likely one to get it if. Either one of them did somehow get MVP. But, like, right now, they're saying Anthony Davis, James Harden, uh, LeBron, and Giannis, and they, they naming all these other people. And I'm like, are, are you really missing some of the, the two – one of the two best stars in the league or, or two of the best stars in the league, I should say? Like, are you really going to sit here and ignore the performances that they put on? Like, Kevin Durant, crazy scorer. It can't be stopped, literally. Stephen Curry clearly can't be stopped. He has some bad nights, but Kevin Durant doesn't – he rarely has bad nights. So I'm like, are you seriously going to ignore all this performance or all this talent that they, they have on their team just because they win so much? Honestly, I don't think neither one of them is going to care about it. KD even said it earlier in the season. He said, I'm too hated to, to win a, a regular season MVP. People to hate me too much to give it to me. And I, I agree with that. Now, in terms of, like, Anthony Davis and, and James Harden and, and LeBron – yeah, those guys are playing good. And another reason, they are valuable to that team. When you look at the MVP award, it's the most valuable player to the team. And if you take James Harden off the Rockets, they become that much weaker. You take LeBron off the Lakers, they are not that good. You take uh, who else? Anthony Davis. You take Anthony Davis off the Pelicans, you know that team is awful. Come on now, you know that team is awful. So if it's strictly if they strictly want to base it on performance or if they strictly want to base it on most valuable player MVP, then it it should automatically go to Anthony Davis because that's obvious. It's so obvious. And that's why I, I believe that Stephen Curry or Kevin Durant won't ever get that regular season MVP award because Steph get injured, they got Clay to step up, they got uh, Draymond, they got Kevin Durant, they got Boogie now, it's like, it, it's so many options, Kevin Durant goes down, they got Steph, they're still winning games, whether, even through the injuries of people getting hurt, even when their star players are getting hurt, they're still winning games, so people look at that like, oh, they must not be that damn valuable, <laughs> and I mean, when you look at people, or when you look at a team like that, and then you look at a team like the New Orleans Pelicans, where Anthony Davis is legit the entire team, or you look at the team like the Milwaukee Bucks where Giannis is really holding it down and, and he does a whole lot for that team and he's like the centerpiece of that team. It's hard not to, you know, take that in consideration when deciding on who is the most valuable player. Giannis does a lot. Anthony Davis does a lot. LeBron does a lot. Uh, James Harden does a lot. He has – James Harden is probably the – if, if you want to go on strictly most valuable player to a team, James Harden is probably the least valuable to – oh, no, 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 I don't want to say that. No, I don't want to say he's the least valuable because that, that would have been that, – that wasn't right. But he is the one player out of uh, like LeBron, Anthony Davis, and Giannis that if Harden goes down on that Rockets team, they can probably still win games. They could still probably pull off a good amount of games and get to the playoffs. But you take – Anthony Davis off the Pelicans, they not winning nothing. They not even getting to the playoffs. You take LeBron off the Lakers, the Western Conference is tough. The Western Conference is tough as hell this year, so there's no telling if he's even going to – or if the Lakers would get in the playoff if LeBron was on there. So that's a, a most valuable player candidate. Um, Who else was it? It was uh, Harden, Anthony Davis. Yeah, I, I covered most of them. And Giannis, he, you take him off the Bucks, it's done. But you go back to the Warriors, Stephen Curry, Kevin Durant. 
they still gonna win games, man. They got they got so much depth, and it's crazy because people won't they won't pay attention to the performance and. They say it's a performance-based award, but then again, they go back to most valuable player, and I think you got to just choose one. Yet, the most valuable player to a team has to put on a good performance, obviously, to, to you know become a candidate and win the award. But when you have so many outstanding players on this one team in the league, it's hard just to, to pull out one player and say, you know what, he's the most valuable to this team. You know what, he's the most valuable to this team. Oh. Nope, Draymond is the most valuable to this because they have a lot of t- they have a lot of people on their team who could be considered the most valuable to the team. But obviously, if someone goes down, they always find a way to keep the ship going. And they always find a way to keep it going. You know, even if Steph gets hurt, KD get hurt, they always find some way to keep the ball rolling. And that's why they won't people on that team won't get the credit they deserve in terms of how valuable they become to a team or how valuable they are to a team unless they leave. Like if KD goes somewhere during the summer, he leaves and, and well, obviously he's not going to leave. But if let's say he did. Let's say Kevin Durant did decide, you know what, I want to go to wherever. I want to go to New York. So he goes to New York and then he starts playing good there. Then they'd be like, oh, okay, now, you know, Kevin Durant, he's doing his thing. He's not with six other superstars on that, on the Warriors. So his team he's on now in the Knicks is not not packed with, with four other superstars or whatever. So maybe we can consider him now. But when you're a solo star on one team and you're really doing everything, that does boost your chances of winning the MVP because you don't have to worry about everyone else on your team you know everyone else on your team isn't a superstar because you stand out the most and it's hard to to find that one person on the Warriors who stand out the most when everybody is doing so good at one time